welcome to I Do To Launch. My name is Lisa Zufall. I will be your host today. And in the studio with me is a very special lady. Um, and I know that you will be blown away by her story. Before we get started with her story, though, I want to do a shout out to our sponsor, Studio Americana, the studio that we are in currently in Golden Valley, Minnesota. They are a recording studio designed to help businesses, organizations uh, create high quality podcasts, live streams, webinars, and more. And they make the process easy. Let me tell you, um, when I show up here, Ian just sits me in this chair and he does all the, his team does all the tech work for me. Um, so I don't have to worry about a thing. It's just showing up and making, you know, and figuring out what I'm going to talk to you guys about. So if you're looking for a service like that, I highly suggest that you get a, get a hold of Studio Americana. They have consulting, editing, and publishing services, access to voiceover talent. They're ready for any level of project. And what that means is whether you just, you're just you dabbling in it, you want to kind of play around and see if it's something for you, or you you want to get out of the basement and you want to do something of a little bit more uh, high-level professional podcast, uh, check out Ian. He, you can find him online, studioamericana.com. Schedule your free tour and uh, learn more. Meet him and uh, see what his studio is all about. You won't be disappointed. It's a pretty cool place. So that being said, we thank you, Studio Americana. And I am excited to introduce this lady. She's got quite the story. So we are going to really talk about you and your story and what you've got going on. She's got a lot of stuff going on. She's a busy lady. Yes, I am. <laughs> and it is an honor. I got to say it is an honor to, to know you. Mm. You've inspired me. Thank you. So Sarah Olson is the owner, the CEO of Levity Products. It is a company here in, in the Twin Cities. Her product is called Let Lex Projects. Mm -hmm. And right now she is raising funds for this product. And I'm we're going to kick it off with the very beginning of how this all happened, how Levity Products uh, came about and where she is today. So I'm just going to let you take it. Yeah, sounds good. Well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to speak about this. I feel honored that you would take an interest in my story and let me talk about it. Who wouldn't? Um, oh, well, thank you. Um, goodness, my story starts five years ago when Levi, my son, who is five years old, obviously, he was born and when, when he was in utero, we saw ultrasounds and saw everything was good. He was healthy. When he was born, I delivered Levi and they put him on my, on my stomach and I was holding him and I felt something on his back with my hand and I was like, what is this? Right. And... The doctors are like, what is what? And I moved my hand, and it revealed uh, what's called a meninges seal, or it's like a, it's a big bubble right on his spine mm. that indicates he had spina bifida. Um, I had no idea what spina bifida was. You know, a ton of doctors come running into the room, and they're trying to assess everything, and I just had given birth to this beautiful baby boy, and right. all these things are thrown at us, and we're like... What? I don't know. So eight days later, he mm -hmm. had a, um, a major spine surgery, eight days old. Oh, my goodness. Um, and after that, we were like, he's doing great. We had a lot of different opinions about whether he would walk, whether he would oh have goodness. bladder and bowel function. You know, all these things that a brand new mom is like, wow. Was I he had your first? No idea. No, he was my second. Okay. Um, and so we were just... Uh, trying to learn as much as we possibly could about this condition and yeah. but still there's so much to learn and every single case is extremely different right. so you kind of have to wait as they grow to see to see what's going to happen to see what their life is um, going to be like the stress yeah it was it was scary <laughs> oh my goodness it was scary because we had no idea what we were looking for um about five months into his life he would have these episodes where he would just start screaming in pain. Um, and we had no idea why, like inconsolable screaming. And then all of a sudden, after hours of, of screaming, he would stop all of a sudden. And w during one of these episodes, just to give you an idea of uh, the mama bear that I am, during one of these episodes, we took him to the emergency room and we did a five minute very limited MRI just to see if there was something wrong in his head and it was fine and the doctors at that hospital were like well we think he has colic you can go home and I'm like um no he right. doesn't have colic I know I know that my child is suffering you don't have colic for four hours straight and then all of a sudden you're fine right so the next day I actually drove down with Levi to the neurosurgeon's office and I said listen 
we are going to sit here until you help us. And to get in with a neurosurgeon is very difficult. You know, it can take months to get in. And I was like, I don't care. We're going to, you're going to see us today because there's something really wrong with my son. Do you see why she inspires me? <laughs> oh, maybe I'm more obnoxious than anything. No. But I, I just, I have a heart for my children and I, I know, yep. I know, you know, I think every mom feels that. Yeah. Um, so, he actually did end up seeing us that day. Of course. And uh, yeah, I wasn't going to have it any other way. But he saw us and he actually referred us to one of the best urologists here in the state of Minnesota. He is phenomenal. Um, and we did some tests that day and found out that he, Levi needed emergency surgery the very next day oh because we found out that his bladder wasn't working properly. And so his bladder would fill and fill and fill and get to the point where it almost explodes. So no no wonder right. this child was screaming all the time. Right. So he had surgery the next day. It went really well. Um but over the course of the next three years, there was a lot of complications, and it wasn't anything that the doctors did. They did beautifully, but it was just Levi's body. Um, so we had, goodness, I think three three more surgeries over the course of the next year and shut down the original surgery to open a different one. But the, the, the new surgery um, left Levi in a position where he would... He, he would, it wasn't able to control his bladder. It w his body was doing everything for him, and it wasn't a solution, a long-term solution. It was only while he was in diapers. So in January of 2016, we decided to reopen the original surgery to see if we could give him more independence in his life because mm -hmm. he was starting to realize, man, I'm, I'm the only one my age that has diapers, and mama, right. this, is, this is hard for me, even right. at the young age that he was at. And so, and I wanted to give that to him. I wanted to be able to um, give him control over his body, give him right. independence and to look like everyone else. Right. So in January of 2016, we had that surgery. And during that surgery, there's a device that's used to drain the bladder as everything is healing. And there's a lot of people that have to use this device, but it's the only device in the world that does what it does. And this particular device caused a lot of infection, a lot of pain, mm. Pain equivalent to the kind of pain a woman experiences in labor. It's actually the almost the exact same mechanism working. So when a uterus oh. is contracting, uh, yeah. you know those who have had children know what that feels like. Yeah. It's horrifically painful. Yeah. The same thing would happen in Levi's bladder. So oh. it would start contracting, and um, the kind of pain that left him. He would pass out constantly because of the the intense amount of pain, and um, and he's young. He was three, three years old, five, or f almost four. Um, I, as a mother, watching that kind of pain, it changes yeah. you. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, every single mother hates it when their child is sick, and you just feel helpless. Right. But to be in that position and to hold my child. To, in pain to the point where he's passing out in my arms because his, he, he can't physically handle it anymore. Right. It drove me insane. It took him two and a half weeks. He was supposed to be in the hospital for five days from this surgery. And he was in there for two and a half weeks because of the infection and pain that this device was causing. It wasn't even the surgery. He had oh. healed from the surgery beautifully. It was because of this device. And so over the next, actually from... January to April, Levi ended up having six surgeries <sighs> because of the complications that were happening. And by April, I was like, I, I, I can't handle this anymore. Right. And neither can my son. He had just turned four and he was like withering away. I yeah. mean, he was. That's so a lot. Gone. I mean, for an adult to go through something yeah. like that before a child, I, oh my goodness. Oh, it was, it's, it was heartbreaking. Um, like, like I said, it, it changed me. It, it gave me this fire or this fight that I didn't realize was in me. <laughs> um, and so by April, I went to his doctor and I said, we have to give my child a break. He is gone. Like he's kind of a zombie of a child because he's right. been in the hospital at this point, 60 days of the 90 days we were into this year. Oh, my goodness. And so um, the doctor agreed that we could give him a break as long as we could do a few certain things to make sure that his, his body was safe. Over those next 
three months. He was, oh, it was so good to see him joyful and a four-year-old little boy. But we knew that he was going to have to have another surgery because his body wasn't in a place where um, it, it could be healthy long term with right. the solutions that we had. So in July of that year, we met with his urologist again, and I said, listen, I get that we have to do another surgery, but we cannot use this device again. There has got to be something else with everything that we have in this world. <laughs> yes, and he said? He said, that's not an option. We, there is nothing else. And he jokingly said as he walked out the door, honestly, with tears in his eyes, because he, you know, doctors care so deeply you know, especially these specialists that see these kids suffer. He cared so deeply for my son. And with tears in his eyes, as he walked out the door, he said, Sarah, if you want something different, kind of jokingly said, you're going to have to invent something. And when he walked out, I was like, okay, I guess mama's, Challenge accepted. I guess mama's going to invent something. <laughs> because I, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't watch my son that way. And there's nobody on this planet that cares more about my son than me. Right. And so I knew that it was up to me to do something mm. different. And I, I, I have no background whatsoever in engineering and, and anything medical and, and nothing. I am a mama. I mean, I have a little bit of business back background, but I have been a stay-at-home mom since, since I've had children. Um, and so I'm like, oh, my goodness. I, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. But, um, I, you know, I have, I have, I'm a woman of faith. I believe in, in Jesus. And so I prayed and I was like, what am I going to do? And it was like, I swear to you, it was like a lightning bolt from heaven with this idea. And I went onto YouTube and called a couple of people that I know to learn how to do a CAD design and figure out how to um, put my this idea on paper mm -hmm. so that we could send everything to a 3D printer to have um, this 3D printer print a prototype and see if my idea would work. Mm -hmm. And so we got this prototype back. I took it to the urologist and I was like, you remember when you told me that there was nothing else but this device and that I was going to have to invent something? He was like, yeah, I know. I mean, obviously. And I'm like, well, I kind of invented something. And he's like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, yeah, I was serious. I cannot see my child like this. It, oh, that's it's, awesome. it's, uh, it was horrific to see my child like that. Yep. Um, and it, it drives a mama to do whatever it takes. Yep. And if I had to invent something, I was going to invent something. Right. And so I gave it, I showed it to the doctor and he was like, kind of in disbelief at this point because he was like, I cannot, this is insane. <laughs> But he looked at it, he tested it, and it worked. And he was like, what is this? And he's like, this thing would change the lives of a lot of people, Sarah. He's like, I can think of thousands of patients that I have now or have had in the past that could have massively benefited from this device. That's huge. Yeah, oh, my word. <laughs> I was like, Wait. What were you thinking when he said that to you? Were you like, well, I thought it was a good idea, but... <laughs> well, at that point, for me, my only goal was to help my child through this next surgery right. and not have to deal with two and a half weeks in the hospital dealing with that kind of pain and infection. Right. So I was like, oh, yeah, I suppose there's other people that maybe <laughs> could use it. But, hey, can we get back to my kid here? <laughs> like, that was my soul. It was at that point, that was my focus because I just I couldn't watch it again. Yep. And so he showed a, um, a few other doctors and nurses, and they were like, you need to get a patent on this immediately. And I was like, well, what are the chances that we can use this device on Levi for his surgery that it was in 29 days at that point? And he's like, I cannot use a device unless it is patented. And, um, and I'm like, well, how do you get a patent? He's like, good luck. I'm like, I, I don't know how to even do that. And oh. so, again, back to the Internet, back to asking questions of everybody I knew. I said, how can you help me? I need to get a patent on this device. Um, and so I found um, an amazing gentleman who is a patent developer. And we worked day and night nonstop for 29 days to develop a patent that I could file so that we could use this device on Levi. And three days before his surgery, we filed for the patent and uh, we were able to use the device on Levi for his surgery. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's more awesome <laughs> is that what Levi 
went through in January of that year, two and a half weeks in the hospital with this with a device that exists already. Um, only took Levi one night of observation after his surgery with using my device, and he went home and healed beautifully with no pain. There was no infection we had to take care of. Um, and I was like, we did it. We're good. And the urologist came back to me. He's like, no, you're not, <laughs> because you need to get in the mind frame that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of kids all over the world that need this. And he's like, here's the other beautiful part about this. He's like, your device can be put on your son by yourself. The device that exists has to be placed by a doctor. Well, here in the United States, we have the privilege of being able to drive down to the emergency room whenever we want to. Right. And all of the devices are already there. All of the help is already there. But that's right. not true everywhere in the world. Right. And so he, he's, a, he's a doctor that does medical missions, and he travels all the, over the world. And wow. he's like, I cannot tell you how many children this would help all over the world because there are children that die from simple bladder infections because they don't have antibiotics. They don't have the device even that we have here. Mm. They don't have the option of placing that because they have to get to a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he's like, how cool to be able to help a mama in some hut somewhere far, far away that you would never know or never have access to. And they don't have access to doctors, but help that mama save her own child's life. And I was like... In that moment, my whole focus changed. I'd helped my son, and that was awesome. It was amazing. I was proud. Um, but then I started thinking, I need to help other mamas because mm -hmm. I know what this is like to watch my own son. Mm -hmm. And if there are mamas all over the world that have to deal with this, I feel like I need to do something about this. I feel a responsibility now. Um, that lightning bolt gave you the responsibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think that lightning bolt would have come if it was meant for just my son, honestly. Yeah. I think that uh, the responsibility is to get it into as many hands as we possibly can, hospitals all over the world, and uh, mamas yeah. all over the world, babies all over the world. Hopefully we can relieve pain and infection in their life, but also have the ability to potentially save lives of children um, because of this little device that I created and so, so what I know is that you've basically been working nonstop on non this thing. Nonstop. Not only to heal your child or to help him yeah. feel better, function better, and do better, yeah. but now it's transitioning into this, this is, we're going to change the world. Yeah. Yeah. And you really literally will yes. when this hits the market. 100%. So you've put in place, you've got your patent, you've done trials, or you're in the middle of trials? Yep, we're in the middle of trials. So there's a lot that goes into clinical trials for a device. But there's a reason why there's not a lot of people like me that invent medical devices. It's ridiculously difficult. It's very, very expensive. But I... The only thing I knew how to do was open my mouth. I, uh, yeah, I know how to talk. And so all I did was go from one person to one person to one person that says, can you help me or do you know somebody that can? And I would just tell my story as many times as I possibly could. And that led me to um, two gentlemen that have helped me in an immense way um, get to where I am today as far as creating a protocol and a path to get my device to market. And I've gotten um, so many donations from uh, so many amazing people, $20 at a time, honestly, to get us to where we are. But now we're getting into um, a time where we need, we need a lot more money to be able to finish what we've started. And right now, up until this point, we are, um, we're almost done uh, building molds for prototypes. We are in the middle of biocompatibility testing, and that just means that we want to make sure that it's safe to put on a child. I, you know, the, the materials that we're using to every little dimension of every piece of that thing, um, making sure that we have the right adhesives. I actually sat down with 3M, and they are partnering with me for um, for the adhesive for the device. So I've, I'm creating as many partners, strategic partnerships as I possibly can. And I, I realize that I'm not a medical device company. I, I am Sarah Olson from Hugo, Minnesota, and that is it. But I am Mama Bear, and I will do whatever it takes if I need to stay up until 2 in the morning to research the different kinds of TPE, uh, you know, a medical-grade um, product 
to be able to use for my device, I'll do it because I don't want to just put it into somebody's hands and say, okay, you figure it out for me and I'll just say yes or no. Yeah. I want to know what I'm doing. I want, um, I want to make sure that my goal and my purpose that I was given is executed well and again, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's not about how great you are. It's about how many people you surround yourself with that are greater than you mm -hmm. and to stay open. And sometimes you have to, you know, give up things like watching your shows or doing fun things with your friends. Um, yeah. Because because uh, when I decided that this is what was going to happen, I decided I've cut off all other options of it not happening. Right. It's going to happen. It's going to help a lot of kids exactly. all over. You, you are on a movement now to yeah. raise a, quite a bit of money. I am, yeah. And the, you know, from the, the people that are watching this or listening to this, there is a lot of pain in this lady's voice. And you felt it when she spoke about her story. Imagine that thousandfold. Moms all over the place going through the same stuff. And Sarah has come up with something really that can help that, that can help these kids, that can help these mamas, that can help these families. But she needs support. Yeah, you need help. And if it's not coming from a big time investor, it's got to come from average Joes, moms and dads yeah. across the country who say, yeah, let's let's create a different product that can actually do something for our kids. Yeah. And up until this point, I'm telling you, it has been an army of people that want to be a part of something that's going to change the world because not everybody you know, ha are faced with challenges like I was, but they want to be a part. They want to be a part of not only not only, you know, creating a medical device, but creating, being a part of a story, because this isn't just about Sarah Olson and Levi Olson. This is about an army of people who are, are rising to be a part of a story that could, you know, far outlive all of us. Right. And it's so cool to watch. It's so amazing to watch. And right now, every single dollar that we raise it's not going towards research and development. That part is already done. The path is already paved. We are debt free as of right now because of the generosity of a lot of people. Um, and so right now it's just about finishing the product and getting through clinical trials. Next month we're supposed to be starting human clinical trials at a state hospital in Latin America, one of the largest research hospitals in the world. And not only in urology, but we just found out that we were going to be um, used for four more different industries, oncology, proctology, gastroenterology, um, and urology. Um, that's huge. I, that's it's huge. Massive. So it's not just kids like mine. It's yep. people, uh, you know, and with a lot of different conditions will be able to use my device. And the way that you invented it is so disruptive yeah. where you don't have to go see a doctor, which is going to help so many people all over the world. Right. They can get the product and they can save their own lives or a family member's life without right. going or trying to get to a doctor. Right. Who right. could be thousands of miles away. Exactly. That's, that's such a, that was a huge passion of mine to create something that a mama anywhere on this planet could use to relieve her baby or, um, or save, save his or her life. That's. It's, am it's amazing to be a part of something like that. And I say a part of it because it's not just me. There's so many people that have gone into helping this project along. And we've, we've made strategic decisions to, to make this a we thing and not a, a me thing. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about keeping this, uh, that in mind, that this is not, this is not about me. This is about uh, helping people that don't have the ability to help themselves right now and asking people, do you want to be a part of something like that? Because some, it can take $20. It could be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It doesn't matter the amount, but just the fact that people would rise and say, yeah, me, I want to be a part of something that's going to change, change a lot of lives. So all those people that want to be a part of it right now, where do they go? So right now we're in the process of building a website. It's not quite finished, but I do have a donation page. It's um, youcaring.com yep. forward slash L-E-C-S. Yep. The Lex is, is what the device is called. Youcaring, Y-O-U-C-A-R-I-N-G dot com forward slash L-E-C-S. Yep. This lady has been working around the clock for the past five years. Well, well, not necessarily the last five years on this. It's been in January. It'll be a total of a year. It's, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. Oh, um, because he was four. 
when you were done with the the craziness. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So we've we've gotten this far. Um, when I wow. sat down with 3M, actually, they were like, "Do you realize that it would take a massive medical medical device company about th- two to three years to get to where you are right now?" Yeah. And I'm like, "I uh, I, I realize that. <laughs> I don't know how we've gotten here, but I just continue to say yes to scary decisions. Um, I want I want to be somebody that continues to say yes and step out instead of letting fear." get the best of me because there believe me there have been plenty of times where I'm like oh my what am I doing I am in over my head but the right people come along and uh the money keeps showing up and um away we go we're 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 gonna finish this yeah I well my thought is is you know you talk about that thunderbolt I believe that um there there is a part that is you that's that um I I would like you to recognize, and that's you were there to listen right. to the Thunderbolt. Yeah. Because I'm sure that Thunderbolt has hit a lot of people, and they wouldn't listen because they didn't have the faith or the drive to say, yeah, I'm totally doing this. I don't care how crazy it is. You are right. We're going to make this happen. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it is just the, the fact that I have a why that's so big that I would sacrifice my own life for that little why. Yeah. I didn't mean to make you cry. No. But it's boy. Good. And when I That's first when, you know. when I first met Sarah and she yeah. told me her story, I got chills seriously mm-hmm. because it is so completely powerful. You are a driver. There is there is no question about it. I'm sure you were a driver before, but this thing, I mean, there's no stop. You are a freight train at yeah. this point, yeah. and it's just fun to watch your story unfold as it's coming together because I know that you've taken great leaps, great stretches. You have no medical background. No. <laughs> no, I don't. And I'm not an engineer either. But. And you were telling me a story, and I don't know if we can share this, so just tell me if we can, mm-hmm. where you were giving, given three choices by your attorneys. Yeah. Yeah, three different, o- or actually it was four different options of different directions we can go. You know, I was in a, a boardroom with a lot of different people that were much smarter than me. And uh, I, when we sat down, they gave me the four options. They said, which one will you choose? Here's the one we we advise you to choose and I was like can I just take five minutes and I stepped out of that room and I I prayed and I was like which one this is your project this is uh this is was this was given to me and so I'm asking which which one and let's call them a b c or d which one and this is the one they all suggest I do a is the one they suggest I do but if that's not the one, I'll do what you tell me to do. And I walked back into that room and I said, I think we're going to go with option C. And they weren't necessarily thrilled with that um, because I was going against their professional opinions. Mm-hmm. Me, little old me going about, you know, who am I? <laughs> who am I to do that? But I, I ask and I listen and I do. That yeah. is what I'm good at. I'm not good at much more than that. I ask, I listen, and I do. And when I hear the answer is C and not A, I go with C, regardless of who's going to tell me I'm right or wrong, because I know that I'm right, because that's the answer I've been given. And two weeks later, we found out that if we would have gone with option A, as I was advised, something wouldn't have gone well. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was, it was uh, found out that yeah, option C was absolutely the right, the right choice. And because of that, we keep moving forward, like yeah. you said, like a freight train. We are going so fast. Yes. And, um, you know, it just, it's, a, it's about a daily decision, too, because, you know, you, you said that some people get that lightning bolt, but I'm telling you, I, didn't, I don't want to listen to it because to listen to it means you've got to put yourself out there. It's, it's so much fear. There could be failure. Yeah. There could be money, people's money lost. I, that's a massive... That's a massive undertaking. But when you say no, that means something else has to give. And for me and my story, that would have been exactly. my son. And there was nothing that was going to stop me from giving everything my son deserved. And not only my son, but children everywhere. Mamas deserve a chance right. to relieve their children. Um, and if I have a way, Gall darn it, I'm going to give them that way, <laughs> you know. Right. Come ho- you know, hell or high water. It's, it was going to happen. It was going to happen. Well, I, I think all the viewers and the listeners will understand exactly why when I met you, I was like, holy buckets. <laughs> She's doing this. There's no stopping her. Yeah. I mean, 
there might be hiccups in the road, but there is nothing at this. At, honestly, and this is just my perspective, there is nothing going forward that you cannot handle. Yeah. Period. After all that you've gone through, the mountain that you are climbing up, just you got to keep going. Yeah. Well, and there's there's hiccups all the time, but honestly, I view those hiccups. I mean, I expect them. Of course, there's going to be nothing, nothing worth anything was easy getting there. That's right. just not a thing. Obstacles are, you know, are, are what make it. Right. Um, I I I said this today to somebody. I said, uh, you know. Uh, muscles are built exactly the way that the heart and the mind are built, and that's only with resistance. And mm-hmm. when you when you expect that resistance to come, it's it's not as scary when it gets there. You choose now how you're going to respond when those obstacles come, and you can either shrivel away and be afraid, or you can say, "I'm ready. I need to become an expert at something else now. Yes. So let's stay up till 2 a.m. If that's what it takes, that's what Mama's gonna do, oh and uh, and figure this out because this obstacle is 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 part of the journey. And if you can't embrace every single part of the journey, then you don't deserve the end of it. And right. so, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of this last year have been has been obstacles. It's it's not easy finding the amount of money that I need, especially someone like me. You know, if if I were uh, an engineer, if I had medical background, but you know, w- when, when Sarah Olson with no background walks in and I say, I'm a mama and I'm a mama on a mission. Can you help me? You know, while people love the story, it's, it's easy to hesitate and say, Oh, is she going to get the job done? And I want to prove myself. I want to prove that it doesn't matter who I am or where I've come from. That's kind of the reason why God uses the, the least of these. He uses the people that it doesn't make sense because if he used the people <laughs> that made sense, he wouldn't get the glory that he deserves. Right. Like, right. Of, of, of course this isn't Sarah Olson. This has to be something far greater than me making this happen. And so, um, you know, I just open, I just open the door for, for people to be a part of this story because then the more people have the opportunity to be blessed. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. You have a beautiful soul. You really do. Thank you. And it's been a hard road, and I know that. But, I mean, you have a tribe of people that you may know them, you may not know them, Mm -hmm. but you are surrounded by love, sister. Yeah. And anything you need, anytime, you're going to make me cry. Don't make me cry. (laughs) Shame on her. (laughs) So, again, youcaring.com. Y O U C A R I N G dot com forward slash L E C S. Go there. <clears throat> what are you asking for? 10, 15 bucks for every person in the state of Minnesota would put you over the top. Oh, my word. That would put me way over the top. Um, you know, we were at the beginning of this, we were just on... in the Twin Cities. There's three yeah. million people in the Twin Cities. If we get all of them to <laughs> give one dollar, oh my goodness, that would do it. Yep, yeah, that would do it. Um, at the beginning of this, we had a goal set out to raise $2 million to complete this project. And, you know, and it, to me, that might as well be $200 million. You know, like it's, it's such a ridiculous amount of money, but it's, no, it's nothing to God. <laughs> you know, if he, he wants to get a project done, he'll get, he'll, he'll get the $2 million. Yeah. And he'll, he'll, use, he'll, he'll use all kinds of people from all different places giving $20 at a time if he needs to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're we're we've been building this incrementally, like you know, twenty five thousand at a time, and then fifty thousand at a time. And um, while it would be great to get a two million dollar check, I, I realize that um, you know we might have to do this little little chunks at a time, and and we've made it work that way. I mean, debt free, everything's paid for as of right now. That is so, amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. But to finish, we still got a long ways to go. Yep. So. And how long, bef- once you're done with the human clinical trials, yep. how long before it can actually hit the market? Um, so after that, we have two options. We have the option to s- to have an exit uh, and sell sell the device to a corporation that could, that could mass produce them easily. Um, so there's that option, or we're actually all set up with a manufacturing company uh, with our molds to to start manufacturing ourselves. So it, it will depend when we when we get to the end, you know, where we're at and things, um, how things have um, you evolved, know, evolved, and, yep. and where we're at. But um, you know, p- we're we're not that far away. I would conservatively say about 12 to 18 months from now, we'll be ready. F- we'll be ready to 
to amazing. have it in the hands of everybody. Yeah. That is amazing. I know. I know. How long does it normally take a medical device to go through this process and get to market? At the beginning of this, <clears throat> I, I was told five to seven years. Okay. And from start to finish, it will be about two for me. I don't, uh, that's crazy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't mess around, folks. No, I don't. So get out there to youcaring.com, L-E-C-S, um, or just drop her a note. Uh, is it okay if people connect with you on Facebook? Absolutely. Or you have a Facebook page for the Lex Project. We do, yep. It's called the Lex Project, so go and find the Lex Project on Facebook. Yep. And we'll um, include the links on the YouTube and um, the podcast recording, so you guys can link there, too. But. Yeah. Connect with her. Yeah, She'll inspire please. you all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. You are an amazing woman. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Thunderbolt and making a difference and yeah. changing the world. That's pretty cool. Thanks for letting me tell my story. Anytime. I appreciate Come it. Come back and, and give us an update. I will. When you can. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah, that would be awesome. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. This has been a very special episode of the Idea Launch Show. Uh, I'm so glad that you joined us. If you like this episode... I'm going to ask you, instead of liking and sharing it, just go out to youcaring.com forward slash L-E-C-S and give Sarah a couple bucks and then share that with your friends and ask them to do the same. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you.